Hey everybody, Will here, and today I have some good news. I am actually in the process of buying things for my very next computer build, and in fact it's right over there. You can see I have a mystery pile of stuff. But as I am preparing to start building it, um, I realize I want to get to one little quick half ass project first. Uh, you see, when I initially built this kind of workshop area that we are in now, um, I was very much thinking of filming when I was building it. I left a lot of space around the tables to put cameras and lights and tripods and sliders. And I also wanted it to look kind of relatively clean. I didn't want it to look super cluttered. I wanted backgrounds to kind of be not too busy. But as you can see, that plan is sort of falling to pieces. You may notice this shelving unit right here, which is a relatively simple shelving unit. It's just basically two by four posts with these frames of two by threes going horizontally with a piece of OSB on top of it. Um, this was kind of my main shelving unit area. I've got my tools on it. I had rope and spray paint on it. And uh, on this side, I had some bins with parts in it. And it was all very organized when I started out, but eventually I just started throwing um, stuff anywhere I could find space. You can also see as we move along here, I've got things like the ladder, which was taken out from the new floor build. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it's sitting there. My wood pile has become kind of out of control here. Uh, random things lying on my work desks, such as the succulent right here. The whole wall here is lined with glass and other supplies for a future project. Basically, the whole place is kind of becoming a cluttered mess. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to build another shelving unit, much like that one back there, for this side of the room. But I didn't want to just build a shelving unit against the wall on this side of the room. What I wanted to do is actually divide this room into two spaces. One would be this much bigger workspace area, which would be still big enough to have cameras lining around the tables and all that. But then I also wanted to make a thin and narrow storage space in the back that would be out of sight, where I can pile things for future projects and not have it kind of cluttering the backdrop of my videos. And what that's gonna do is actually give me one more benefit too. If you'll notice, I've got these big lights, uh, these simple, fluorescent tube lights lining the workshop. It may seem extreme, but uh, one of the biggest things about making videos is a lot of people don't give it enough light. And so I've lined the place with these lights, um, but actually it's still not quite bright enough. If you could see the settings on my camera right now, I have the ISO up a little bit higher than I'd want them to, um, just because it's such a massive space that I'm trying to light. So when I redefine the wall with these new shelves, I can then also move the lighting in tighter and uh, just focus all that light into the space and that should help us out a little more as well. Um, so I guess there's nothing else to do but get started on my half-ass project, cheap-ass shelves. First, I recruited my girlfriend to help me move all the really heavy things out of the way into one side of the room. Then, I started grabbing some of my lumber for the project, which, illustrating the dire circumstances of my workshop storage situation, was piled in my living room. For the vertical support posts of the shelves, I would be using 2x3s. The 8 foot tall boards would be the perfect height for my new shelving unit, and I decided to make the shelves each 4 feet wide by 2 feet deep, or a quarter of a piece of plywood. The space I had to work with measured about 21 feet long, and with there being four feet between each set of supports, the first step was to create five pairs of supports. The supports would be boxed in at either end, to allow it to be secured to the floor and boards that would run across the top of the structure. With our 8x2 support frames assembled, I turned my attention to starting the shelves. 
Made from 7 16th inch OSB, these panels would simply be cut into quarters and create our shelves. In this case, our OSB was even marked with guides to make the process even easier. Unlike my other shelving unit, I wanted this system to be adjustable. Instead of bolting everything together, I wanted the shelves to float between the support posts. Small brackets running down the length of the support frames would be able to support the shelves and give me multiple mounting options for storing larger or bulkier items that might otherwise not fit. To do this, I would brace the 2x3 frames with a number of 2x4 shelf supports. The wider 2x4s would stick out a fraction of an inch beyond either side of the support, providing a surface for the edge of the shelf to rest on. After deciding I wanted up to five levels of shelves, or a shelf every 16 inches, I began measuring and cutting the shelf brackets. With the supports complete, I cleared the surrounding area to prepare and install them. I also moved my old supply rack into its new spot behind the structure, leaving enough room for a small walkway in between. Rather than being secured to the floor, the first support frame is secured to the wall. The distance between the support should be exactly 4 feet, however rather than measuring the distance, I opted to use the cut shelves as spacers. Then I secured the remaining supports to the floor with concrete screws, and 2x3s and 1x2s are run along the top. With the main structure of the shelves completed, the small gap between the last support and adjacent floor is filled in for increased stability. This section will also function as a bridge, as the top of the structure will be lined with plywood to create an additional catwalk for camera placement. Seven sixteenths inch OSB is then cut to fill in the floor. Come on. With the sports complete, the final step is to reinforce the shelves. The 7 16 inch OSB isn't strong enough to support much weight without sagging in the middle, so I cut a pair of 2x2s to run along the edges of the shelves to make them stronger, measuring about 3 quarters of an inch shy of the 4 feet length of the shelves to avoid hitting the supports. I ended up putting together only 13 shelves of the 20 possible mounting locations. However, this was more than enough to create a configuration that would work for me. Come on. Come on. 
I eventually settled on this configuration, which gave me a little extra workbench in the back, as well as an extra walkway for easy access. Come on. But before putting the final touches on the shelving unit, I decided to put together a simple lumber rack to go behind it against the back wall. This would include a number of supports made from 2x3 beams secured to the wall. The bottom four feet would be left clear for storing plywood segments against the wall, and the top section would be reinforced with a second piece of 2x3, and then bored out to fit a number of 1-inch EMT tubing segments that can then be used to hang longer sections of lumber. After finding studs and cutting the 2x3s to height, the second 2x3 is cut and glued to the top of the first beam. The top section was a little less than 4 feet tall, and on it I measured and marked three levels to mount my EMT support arms. Next I cut my 1 inch EMT segments. I decided to make them only 16 inches long to keep the aisle clear, which when embedded in the 2x3 supports, would leave me with about a 13 inch shelf. The end facing out was ground smooth to get rid of any dangerous sharp edges, and the end to be mounted in the wood was tapered a bit to make it easier to install. I then took a 1 and 1 8 inch wood boring bit and set it at a slight angle to help prevent lumber from rolling off the lumber rack. The measurements on the 1 inch EMT are for the inside dimensions, so they will fit very tightly into the 1 and 1 8 inch hole. I used a metal hammer to force the segments into the wood, and then bolted the assembly into the studs running down the wall. In reality, these new shelves would soon be ugly and cluttered like my old unit, so I wanted to make a simple panel to cover the shop side and make them look nicer. I decided to use the same material I used to separate my living room, a feature that has come to be referred to as the Dexter Wall, which is made from 6mm thick plastic sheeting. Using 1x2 furring strips, I first made a 4x8 frame. I then took the plastic and pulled it taut over the frame, stapling it around the outer edge to hold it in place. More furring strips are used to wrap around the outside of the frame, sandwiching the plastic between the two layers. Then, the excess material is cut from the back, and the assembled panel is screwed into the support posts.
And lastly, brackets are cut and mounted on the top of the support post before 1x4 boards are run across the top of the structure to remount the lights. It's been about a month since I actually finished this project and I thought now's a good time to give you a quick little tour. If you want to come over here and follow me, the first thing I want to show you is the lumber rack, which is actually a design that I'm really proud of. I think it came out really great. Right now it is completely loaded. I actually helped my father uh, with a deck demolition he was doing um, and ended up uh, reclaiming a bunch of the lumber to use in a future project and um, so right now it's just completely full and I'd have to say the one thing I think I would change about um, this lumber rack that I did again it was really simple and easy to make and it seems like it could hold a lot more weight is one thing I would have done is had it stick out a little bit more to hold more lumber um, again one of the reasons I wanted to it's a, it's a narrow corridor right here and I didn't want to kind of be stuck but there's definitely room to stick out um, probably even a half a foot more and actually on these upper levels I'll probably cut extensions later so they can hold a couple more layers of lumber but that's the lumber rack and again on the bottom here I have uh, larger sheets of plywood, again, some full 4x8 sheets right here. And one really cool thing is with the 2x3s, it kind of spaces them off a wall a little bit, which makes them really easy to grab. So that was another cool thing about this design. And, uh, and then here we have uh, stuff for my next case mod hiding over here, as well as the engine, which, um, yes, I will show you how I got it down here later. Uh, but for now, until it goes back in the car, it's just being stored there um, in kind of the extra storage space that I have. And then if we move kind of down here into the shelving corridor area, <clears throat> you can see how I'm using the shelves. Again, this area right here, I turned out to be really nice to kind of create little extra desk space. I have a chair that tucks underneath it here just to work on um, some projects that I don't want to film, that I don't want to disrupt my filming area to do really quick, which I've had to do. Um, so that's kind of a little extra work area here. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of shelves with some stuff kind of organized and at this point some stuff's just kind of tossed on the shelves. Uh, again, the plastic sheeting here really kind of obs obscures everything that is on the shelf. Um, well, still actually a really cool thing about the plastic sheeting, it still lets in a lot of light. Right now I have an extra light up here for filming. Um, it's a little bit darker than it should be. Again, I'm not going to be filming back here, but I'll probably hang a light later but one cool thing about the shooting is it just lets in a lot of light to this space and um, in addition to just storage here there's some more storage back there paint cans and scraps of wood and other materials that just nobody really needs to see um, just stuffed on all the shelves here's some more space I have the glass sheets against the wall or whatever else in the future needs to be stored here um, and then in addition of course the old rack of materials plastic tubings and metal tubings and all that right here. So that's kind of the storage area now. And if we move kind of out farther, you'll see this is this, I left this section completely open. Right now everything's okay and it's really open, but I'm sure eventually there's gonna be boxes that are stuffed really quickly in, in the aisle here, as well as I'll probably put my bicycle back here. And this just gives me another passage to get to the materials I have to get to easily in addition to that. And I'm not super pressed for space. I have more than enough storage space right now. Um, so this kind of seemed like a really cool thing to do. But if we head out into the workshop area here, everything has kind of been re rearranged and uh, part of the reason for that is just the space changing, but also another reason for that is I've kind of learned um, how I'm using everything and, and how I would set it up differently after all this time. Uh, one of the things is I want these tools right here, the table saw and the miter saw, I ended up using a lot more than I thought I would, so I just wanted to keep them open on a table. There's my old kind of metalworking area 
bench. And then here is the main desk I'll probably be working on uh, the main projects on and talking to you guys about stuff on. So that's kind of the work tables. And everything again is just much more open. Um, and the, the, I have the drill press right there and the, the scroll saw just out. Um, again, so just make it really easy to be filming stuff when I have to. And then the extra storage rack here, as you can see, is cleaned up a little bit. Uh, it's not perfect, but um, it's a little bit more organized. And again, I'm trying to get everything in bins like that, which helps a little bit with the details and when you're filming and having just distracting backgrounds. Um, so just being in that slightly foggy plastic bin helps a lot. And also it's gonna help a lot when I have to clean. I basically had the stuff on the shelves and I didn't clean the shelves for three years. Now I can hopefully grab stuff off it once or twice a year and at least get rid of sawdust and stuff that accumulates back there. But that's it, that's, uh, that's the end of this workshop storage redesign video. Um, and again, like I said, the next project I'm going to be starting, I don't know when it'll be done, but the next project I'm going to be starting is going to be a new case mod, which is like the first case mod I've done in like two years or three years or something, I don't even know. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And so um, if you like the videos, make sure you're subscribed. And, uh, and also, if you haven't already, make sure you head over to Facebook and like my page, facebook.com slash willyoudesign. Um, and that's gonna help a lot when I'm kind of moving into the case mod stuff. And I'm gonna hopefully be doing a lot more videos on uh, technology and cameras and videography this year. So uh, make sure you do all that. And otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.